Who's hand out? That's kind of wax off right now. Man. Really appreciate you not reading the script. I grew up in a very poor neighborhood in Yonkers. Like, your cred is Jesus. I don't want to be called that. That's weird. Follow me on Twitter. I got no followers. Well, yeah, I made this fucking game. I'll do it. I'll restart. Hello, Mokis. Future mates. Welcome. Welcome to Moki Mates. Listen, this is no simple interview. We don't want to bore you guys and put you to sleep. So let's make it interesting. We're here to find out more about the person behind the titles in the space. And of course, we're all gamers here. So let's put them to the test. And how do we do that? Moki Pochi. It's a game developed by Moku and it's dangerously addicting. A series of items will appear which you have to drop into the playing zone and connecting two items of the same kind will morph them into a different item. If you manage to fill the entire playing zone and it goes above the top level, uh, that means you fucked up and it's a game over. During all of our interviews here on Moki Mates, the guests will be competing against each other to log the highest score. Yeah, you got it. As we're interviewing them and they're answering questions, they're also going to be playing Moki Pochi. During each of our Moki Mates interviews, the guests will be competing against each other, answering our questions, playing Moki Pochi at the same time. And we think it will lead to some interesting conversations and maybe even some spicy leaks. So get ready for some exciting conversations and spicy competition between our mates. And we hope you guys enjoy the show. And if you don't, Moki's gonna shoot you in the fuck. But bro, are you on like the Karate Kid arc right now? Cause you are, I don't know well, if you- That kinda wax off right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does this even come about? Whose idea, where the inspiration? And okay. by the way, you're playing some kind of like strategy it, it seems right now. I, uh, it's called uh, put everything in the corner. Where do you guys think this came from? If you had to guess where this idea- Like it gives me Tetris. Tetris. For sure. Wrong. This came from, this was Momo's idea. Momo was playing a game that was uh, very similar to this. It's a okay. Suica game. And we were playing it in Toronto when we all met up as a team to go over what we're doing for the year. And on every single break that we had, we were just watching somebody play the game and we were like, oh. Yeah, so Momo, Momo was like, listen, play this game. Uh, we started playing it, and, and she was like, we need to make this game. And I was sounds good. Sounds like a good idea. I was telling Han, I was like, I don't hype this up. Just, like, let's put it out. It's just like a little mini game on the site. And uh, it kind of took off. How did the, uh, the NFT idea kind of evolve into existence? I mean, it was always a part of what we wanted to do. When we started the platform, we were... Uh, we were thinking of like, hey, should we have a mascot? Should we not? And Moki was just really important to me. It's like we needed something to that the community can rally around and anchor to. It's gonna Building go. out the, the Moki IP is uh, just as important to me as building out the product and building out the community. Uh, it's something that people can anchor to. Yeah. And it's he's a uh, or it's way more degenerate than I can have ever imagined. Yeah, you know, Tanukis, they're a little, you know, they're they are not always, you know, on the ball, right? It's like, Gilead, you'd be like an awesome, like, Tanuki. I do have big balls. Party, fun, clever, not super organized, right? Like not, not super, you know? You come from like guild settings to building what you guys are building now, like how important were guilds in that moment? How important are guilds still now? I mean, I think that just communities are important. Whether you want to label yourself as a guild or a guild of guilds or just a, you know, a Web3 community, like they're super important. Mo like what we're doing at Moku is trying to turn publishing games into like a bottoms up community event versus like a top down thing like i want gila to to and logic to be 
calling themselves like a co-publisher in Web3, not like a creator, right? And it's like smaller folks that are like with like smaller followings that are just gamers, like they're still going to tell their friends about stuff, right? It's like, you know, what, what was the last game that you guys played that wasn't like a shill from one of your friends? Yeah. When you're like, yo, you got to you gotta play this. Yeah. This is dope. Like hop on tonight. Most of these advertising and like top down publishing, I mean, there's always going to be a place for it. Like a lot of these folks have more money than God and they're, they're going to yeah. keep <laughs> doing their thing and, and crushing it. But I think there's room for this like bottoms up approach. And what yeah. Web3 does really well is like be able to, one, everybody speaks a common language. So like us plugging into games, really easy because everybody talks in NFT standards and token standards. And as long as we operate that way, I can plug in anything. If I was doing that in web two, it would be impossible. It'd be like, oh, what does your backend look like? And what is yours? And I want to yeah. give them points and I want to give these people skins. And it's like yeah. it's impossible. It's like, it's an impossible coordination issue between the games and the communities to make that happen. But web three is super easy. It's like, well, okay, you send me tokens and everybody knows how to accept those tokens. And we all have this synergistic thing. Uh, and that's where the opportunity comes in. So like, that's, I'm, I don't remember your question. I'm just going. We want to get to know you. I mean, Gil and I already kind of know you, right? But like for those that are watching, we want to get to know Bruce, right? I mean, I, I've always been a card game player. So I, I was a Call of Duty, like first person shooter player when I was in high school, pretty competitively. Uh, John, our community manager and I, we, we had a team that made it to the, the quarterfinals of like a, a major, one of the first major online tournaments uh, by GameSpot.com. Dude went to Italy. It's me, Mario. No way. Play. In, in the, in the, in the later rounds. I, I blame him to this day. That's the reason why we didn't make it to the finals. Yeah. Uh, but mainly trading card games. So like Magic the Gathering Online. Runeterra, rest in peace, uh, and Axie. Yeah. yeah. Played, played a bunch of Axie. Let's just go all the way back. I was a, I was a bartender nice. in, in, right after high school. Taste tester at Kraft Foods. The taste yeah. tester? Yeah, so uh, when I was in college, there was a Kraft Foods factory, like, right up the street. So I answered a Craigslist ad, and I became a, a taste tester. And I would spend all of the money that I got from taste testing. I would buy Magic the Gathering online draft with it. Like every so like, just... since then, it was probably the amount of plastic cheese you ate. Yeah, they they would put crazy stuff in there. They would put like a stick of butter in the pudding and they'd be like, "How's it taste?" I'm like, obviously, like shit. Like you ruined it. And they'd be like, good. good. You know, it's like what the hell. You know, like uh, yeah. Then you know, I went to school for uh, like health sciences and physical therapy didn't like it went into technology worked at micro center for a little bit then shout out micro center hey, yeah, hey. micro center i was building yeah. the pcs in the back and then i um i got into like corporate tech then answered another craigslist ad and ended up at bridgewater my camera just made a funny noise yeah and, and I, was <laughs> I think it turned off don't edit it don't edit it. <laughs> yeah, I think it turned off. What the fuck is going on, bro? At AxiCon. And I crushed people. I remember I was playing you. Shout out to you. One of my favorite people. And, and I'm talking. So it's the first match. I'm starting. I'm talking so much shit to him. I'm like, hey, man, you should just quit. Like, you should just stop. Because I'm going to beat you. And he's just like, yeah, yeah. Um, and about halfway through the match, somebody leans over to me and they're like, yo, you doesn't understand English. Like he doesn't, <laughs> like he doesn't know what you're saying right now. And I'm like, oh, that's why he's so fucking smiley towards me. <laughs> like, I'm talking shit the whole time. And then him and I eventually figured out how to, you know, get, get some words going later. And, and he's a, he's a great dude. Did he figure out how much of an asshole you were being or, or did no one tell I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it looks like you might be fucked here. Yeah, like what's going on in your Moki Pochi, Bruce? That's a lot of balls. What's going on? I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking right now. I'm just plotting my next move. I actually wasn't paying attention. I'm gonna yeah, get. Uh, you look pretty cooked, to be honest. I can't lie. God 
Damn oh, it. Hey. Yeah. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. This first hey. one. 15, 7, 6. Yeah. Log in. 15, 7, right. 6. Yeah. Let's just edit this. Let's edit this so I can play another one. That, that was the point of it, you know? Like, you kind of get lost in the conversation. And, it, yeah, bro. And you eventually, know. it's going to be... Res you, you're going to be highly respected for this leaderboard right here. Yeah. I grew up in a very poor neighborhood in Yonkers. So, I had... Uh, I was in a little apartment in South Yonkers. Uh, grew up, like, south... Off of... Somewhere off of South Broadway. I won't... Uh, go, I won't give the address, but uh, yeah, so uh, grew up, you know, pretty pretty poor. Dad was a cab driver, uh, mom is a cleaning lady, uh, and it was, you know, you know, I, you know, I think we share uh, some some sort of background uh, in, in that, so you know, it was it was definitely tough, and like one of the ways that really uh, helped out was playing video games. Like, you know, the one thing that we that we did get was like, I rented games like religiously. Yeah, uh, shout out to Blockbusters, bro. You think no, man, I didn't have blockbusters. blockbusters just renting, bro? You no. think I was buying video games? They were not giving me that money. Okay. No, so we we didn't even have blo Blockbuster was too expensive because it was like seven eight dollars to like rent a game <laughs> of Blockbuster, right? So we had this local video store that was called Roberta's, and Roberta's. Uh, had a deal where like you can rent like three movies or three games for three dollars for three days it was a three 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 deal but the game or the thing had to have been made before like 1989 like it had it had to be like old as dirt to get the three for three for three deal okay so i just played a bunch of old stuff <laughs> like like i didn't I wasn't current for like a while, but like, so that's why I would play like Sega Master System, Alex the Kid, like these things that were even before my time as a kid, because like that was what you can get for cheap. They were the, they were the bottom of the ring and they were there for $3. Yeah. And... So I'm like, you guys remember like Alex the Kid and R-Type? And they're like, no, dude, <laughs> like what? <laughs> what are you talking about? So I do remember the pressure though. You'd, you'd rent something. And like you had, obviously you have a, a term in what you've rented it for. So as a kid, I just remember having these games and like, I have seven days to complete everything in this game. Like, yeah. like I got my time. Yeah, like yeah. You, you, there's no chill. You, you yeah. gotta get in there. Like it would be, it, I don't know, it'd be something stupid like Sonic Heroes or something. And I'm like, I have to do everything in this game before yeah. next yeah. week. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Religious. The best thing though is like sometimes you'll get like a manual where like somebody wrote some of the level codes like in the back of the manual. <laughs> just, yeah, so you'll just, like yeah. just fast forward, you'll be like, oh fuck this, let's go. Or there'll be like a save that's already on the cartridge and you'll be like, I'm gonna just load this up. Yeah, just, <laughs> see, see what they was see what they was cooking up with you for. Right. So I saw on our X page, right? On the description, it changed. Something changed. Right. It, it, I, I read that it said game publisher. So like, yeah. what's going on? I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. It just goes back to the, the community. It's like, we want to build a bottoms up distribution protocol for everybody to partake in in Web3, right? So like, what does a publisher do? Well. A publisher helps you distribute your game. Uh, it funds games. It advises them on go to market. It provides services around their gameplay, maybe staff log for QA development. Like publishers, publisher is a very loose term, right? Because different shops offer different things and have different strengths, right? So where I want our strength to be is like one we know web3 especially web3 go to market pretty much better than like most people like mm -hmm. outside of like sky mavis there's there's nobody but essentially like us and sky mavis that have been in the trenches for this many years bringing real games to real people in like a live service environment yeah like there's no there's really nobody else right and we've been doing it sort of in the background with them right and like really putting hard work in around you know how does esports that was
with them. Nice shot. Um, how does esports uh, play into this? How do we do incentive design around the creator program, around the task boards, and all those things? Like nobody else is doing that with the, at the scale that that we've done it so far. And I've I've talked to uh, an investment group, and they're like, yeah, a lot of people are calling themselves publishers, and they're doing not to talk shit, but like they're doing like a play to airdrop and saying like hey we're a web3 game publisher and it's like well, what have you been doing for the last three years like have you been publishing games like a lot of people come in with a lot of great web2 experience and then what they find is like some of that works and some of that doesn't work and usually when they find out what doesn't work it's kind of like too late because they felt like they had a playbook they're like i've been you know i've helped build games that have you know, a million DAU or pulling in $15 million a month. They're like, this Web3 shit is easy. And it turns out it's not. And it's a little bit different than everybody expected when you're going to market. Um, and it's not a quick fix. It's also not a quick installation to like make a good Web3 community. Like our community is like one of the best. Yeah. But we've been growing that for like three years. Like you yeah. don't just... I don't just wake up and be like, hey, we're Moku and we have a great community. It's like, you have to work at these things and put the right foundation and promote the right people in the community. Yeah. To like set an example and to have that spread. It's not an overnight thing. Like what your dad would say. It's like, yo, there's no shortcuts. Like yeah. there, you know, it's, you can try to take shortcuts and you could be successful for a period of time. It depends what your goal is. Like if your goal is to like raise a bunch of money and then go screw off, like, there's definitely a path to that with a lot of shortcuts. We've already seen that and we've mm -hmm. seen people get disappointed. Uh, but if you're trying to do it right, there's there's not a lot of shortcuts. Yeah. There's not. We're reaching the point where this marketing, how it's prior like previously existed, and people think that, oh, you just, you know, you just you just do stuff on social media, it'll catch on. Like that bubble will burst. That like that actually doesn't really work anymore. Like users normal day-to-day -day people who are on social media are probably now more annoyed ads reads those types yeah. of things and it's get it's like it's compound and it's getting worse so like the style of marketing that comes through community building but then also the, the intuitive product you're about to fucking die by the way do not no bro you are cheating <laughs> you're actually <laughs> what the fuck this guy is <laughs> And this is what the fuck? This is supposed to be your game, by the way. I'm hope. Yeah, you I made this fucking game. Trigger. I'll do it. I'll restart. What, <laughs> what are you guys gonna do? It's my ball. Yeah. It's yeah. Bad. It's cool. yeah. We've had a fucking great combo, bro. This had to be done. Yeah. No script. No yeah. nothing. Just, just, just vibe, just vibes, bro. Yeah. We did it. I appreciate you, Bruce. Thanks for coming through, man. I'm glad, man. I'm glad. We're not letting you finish this game, although this looks like it could have been your best score. Um. <laughs> I don't know, like, yeah. Come and, yo, if you can beat Bruce, that's a big. No, you did better doing that. Oh, oh shit. Oh, me. The cheat code. Yeah, there's the cheat code. No, just way. spam. There's no way. There's actually no way. That's been one more question for Um, what socks are you wearing right now? Mama said that the leaves make up in the pond every crack of sun.